In 2014, the infamous Celebgate incident occurred, involving the widespread circulation of private photos of numerous celebrities, including Jennifer Lawrence and Kirsten Dunst, online. In total, approximately 600 high-profile individuals and celebrities fell victim to phone hacking, resulting in the exposure of their personal data to hackers. But you know what? Hacking isn't only a concern for the rich and famous. Everyday folks like us can get caught up in it too. Take for instance the Cambridge Analytica scandal, where millions of regular Facebook users had their personal info scooped up to craft customized political profiles, all to influence their political choices. It is very concerning. As more and more aspects of our lives move online, such as storing data to managing money, it's more important than ever to prioritize our online safety. And what better way to achieve that than by understanding hacking itself? Hello and welcome to our channel. In this video, we'll take you on an express journey through the world of hacking and how hackers operate. We'll also share some tips on how to protect yourself, so make sure to stick around to the end. There's a bag of tricks that hackers dip into when they want to sneak into systems and data. And not all of these tricks involve just tech stuff. Some of them mix it up with human psychology. One of the most widely used types of hacking is called phishing. And Jennifer Lawrence's case, one of the victims of Celebgate, is an example of it. So here's what happened. These hackers sent emails to Jennifer that looked like they were straight from Apple's security team, making it seem like her account was facing a security meltdown. The email was designed to urge her to click a link and fill in her iCloud username and password to verify her account. Now, that link wasn't actually from Apple. It was a sneaky creation by the hackers that mimicked the real website. When Jennifer took the bait, clicked the link, and entered her info, that's all the hackers needed to waltz into her iCloud account, and the rest is history. Another commonly used hacking technique involves intercepting data transmission. Imagine you're just relaxing at a cafe, using their Wi-Fi to check things on your device. Well, you might not realize it, but you could be walking right into a man-in-the-middle attack. Without your knowledge, a hacker might position themselves secretly between you and the Wi-Fi you're connected to. And it could be worse. The Wi-Fi you're connected to might actually be a hacker's setup, posing as a regular public hotspot. Once you fall into the trap, they can snatch up all the stuff you're sending and receiving. Basically, anything you're doing online. They can even send a program to your device, implanting it there for later use even after you disconnected from the Wi-Fi. Scary, right? There are many other hacking techniques besides these two, such as cross-site scripting, DOS attacks, and zero-day exploits. And hackers won't be short of newer techniques. Now, you might be wondering, what do hackers do with the data once they acquire it? Well, there are several likely scenarios. First up, there's the so-called identity theft gig. With enough of your personal information, hackers can pretend to be you. They might open up credit cards, take out loans, or engage in other financial activities in your name. Hackers can also perform an account takeover. Once they've got your usernames and passwords, bingo, they're inside your accounts, your email, your social media, even your bank accounts, all under their control. They might mess with your settings, send messages you never wrote, or, in the worst case scenario, completely lock you out of your account. The hackers might also resort to a ransom tactic. For example, once they get a hold of your data, they lock it up using encryption and then demand money in exchange for the key that frees it. If the data is sensitive and can't be made public, they might even blackmail you with that information, asking for money or else they'll expose it. They can also choose to sell the data they've acquired on the digital black market, which can be a highly lucrative business, as sensitive information can easily fetch thousands of dollars. But you see, hacking wasn't always seen in the bad light it is today. Believe it or not, hacking actually started with a curious and creative vibe, totally different from what most people think. The term hacking itself didn't originally originate from the digital world. 
It emerged from MIT's sprawling Tech Model Railroad Club in the 1950s. Members of the club worked on creating intricate and complex model railroad systems, including miniature trains, tracks, and landscapes, complete with intricate electrical and mechanical components. There were various groups in the club. Some focused on crafting train replicas and scenic landscapes. But it was the wireheads who coined the term hacker to describe clever and innovative solutions to problems they encountered while building these model train layouts. Eventually, the term found its way into the realm of computers and programming lingo. In the early days of computers, hackers sought to test the limits of what they could achieve. For instance, Dennis Ritchie and Keith Thompson tinkered with existing programs, such as the Unix operating system, to enhance their functionality. Essentially, three main types of hackers emerged from this evolving landscape. First up, we've got the white hat hackers. These folks are the good guys of hacking. They use their skills to help organizations find weak points in their systems before the bad guys can swoop in. On the flip side, we've got the black hat hackers. These are the ones you hear about in the news. They're the troublemakers, breaking into systems, snatching data, and causing all sorts of chaos for their own gain. Then there's a middle ground where the gray hat hackers hang out. These hackers don't always play by the rules, but they're not totally evil either. They might stumble upon vulnerabilities in a system without asking permission, but they usually let the right people know about it. Yet this type isn't fixed. Individual hackers can change their roles over time. Consider Kevin Mitnick, for instance. His early hacking escapades included breaking into systems, stealing software, and even evading law enforcement. However, after his release from jail due to his hacking activities, Mitnick underwent a transformative shift. He recognized the potential of his skills for good and transitioned into a white hat hacker, later becoming widely celebrated as a computer security expert. The hackers themselves can form groups, and one notable example is Anonymous. Originating in 2003 on image boards called 4chan, their members, often referred to as Anons, share a common purpose. Protesting against censorship, promoting online freedom, and advocating for social justice. Operating without centralized leadership, Anonymous uses its hacking skills to target various organizations, governments, and individuals they deem responsible for unethical or oppressive behavior. This type of hacking is often classified as hacktivism. Now, to protect yourself from hacking, you don't need to be a hacker or a cybersecurity expert yourself. You just need to be more cautious and implement these simple steps. When you go online, it's crucial to be cautious. Avoid connecting to public Wi-Fi networks unless you're certain of their security. Hackers often exploit these networks to intercept your data. Avoid opening unconfirmed links from social media or suspicious texts. Clicking on them may expose your personal info or infect your device with malware. Additionally, don't install unauthorized apps or programs as they might contain malware. Use strong, unique passwords for each of your accounts. And don't stop there. Enable two-factor authentication whenever possible. Unfortunately, even if you're cautious, you're not entirely safe. Sometimes, the service providers or companies you trust might themselves fall victim to hacking. Even big companies like Yahoo and LinkedIn have not been immune to this. With this kind of hacking, there's nothing you can do about it. However, if you've taken proper security measures, such as using a unique password and not reusing it on other accounts, at least the damage will not spread to your other accounts. If you want to find out whether your data has been compromised, there's a website called Have I Been Pwned that lets you check if your email has been exposed to known data breaches. I'll provide the link in the description. For those who want to enhance their online security further, you can use a virtual private network VPN. Using a VPN will make it difficult for hackers to trace your online activities. Alternatively, you can opt for the Tor browser, which ensures enhanced privacy by routing your online traffic through a network of volunteer-operated servers. While it might require a bit more effort and adjustment, the extra layer of privacy can be well worth it. So far, we have only covered a small area of hacking. 
there is a vast realm beyond data privacy, as hacking can escalate into cyber threats and jeopardize safety and, in some cases, even lives. We might cover that in another video, so make sure to subscribe to our channel. And while you're here, why not check out our playlist? We have a ton of videos on technology and other topics. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.